What's up, Truckers? Tricky Mick here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you got the signy shine up, as I like to say. Today, we're going to be talking about the cost for electrical vehicle conversion for a U.S. commercial fleet analysis that Ryder just released this month. And then we've got uh, another thing here to check out the Tesla semi loss over a thousand miles on a single day independent test, but it's a little bit misleading with the headline. So, one of PepsiCo's all electric rigs drove for almost 372 miles before needing to recharge, which isn't really very far if you think about it, uh, considering how far diesel trucks typically go. Okay, so during the 17th day of the program, Tesla 3 logged a total of 1,076 miles and made just one delivery. And it says, uh, started the journey right after midnight with a state of charge of 95%, which allowed it to travel 371 miles before stopping to get a top up with the state of charge hitting 9.17% mark around 6.40 a.m. Then after about an hour of charging, battery got to 40% and uh, the truck went another 166 miles. And then uh, after an hour and a half recharge, I uh, ended up doing another 357 miles. So if you consider they went uh, 1,076 miles, uh, 357 for that one and a half hour, so 357, 950. So you're looking at probably about four to five hours charging for them to do that total of 1,076 miles because it doesn't say how long it took for them to charge the night before. So I think it's a little bit misleading that they don't have that number. But again, we're looking at you know four to five hours uh, for that. So you're gonna lose a lot of time throughout the day for that truck to run. Um, so here it talks about the comparison of the Freightliner Cascadia's um, that Schneider has and uh, three Tesla semis that participate in the study are part of PepsiCo Sacramento Depot with the other participants, including logistics company Schneider with the uh, Freightliner Cascadia warehouse distributing uh, for performance team with the Volvo VNR and more. Um, so again, I think that it's a little bit misleading um, when they say it went 1,076 miles in one day. Um, you know, so you're, you're looking at a, an hour and a half of charging to go 350 miles versus, you know, if you're got a diesel semi truck, what does it take, you know, 20, 30 minutes to pull in a truck stop? Every once in a while, you might get real backed up and it takes 45 minutes. And then most trucks, you know, you can do at least 1,200 miles, almost all of them. But if you know you're a hyper miler or maybe you got some big tanks, you might be looking at, you know, 1,500, 1,800 miles, um, maybe more if you have very large tanks, like I said. So, um, We've got the electric vehicle conversion analysis, one-to-one -one comparison, total cost for light, medium, and heavy-duty vehicles in California and Georgia, total cost to convert a mixed fleet, and things like that. Um, I think it's a little bit misleading, though, and I'll show you why here in a second. So our quantitative results show a relatively modest increase of 5% for light-duty EVs. I disagree with that, and an increase from 94 to 114% to convert heavy-duty trucks, and from 56 to 67% to convert mixed fleets. And again, I don't agree with this uh, 100%. I think that these numbers are a little bit lower than they should be, and I'll explain why here in a moment. Um, and then all this other stuff over here is just going over like, uh, what are the legal requirements, mandates, and then their customers frequently asking about the costs and benefits of you know, incorporating EVs into their fleets. So that's why they did this analysis, is for their customers. And since this is the largest, um, you know, leasing company pretty much in North America, this is probably going to be the best we have so far to really compare. Um, again, I don't agree 100%, but, you know, this is the best that we've got. And, and here's why right here. So it says that the uh, fuel costs of 613 per gallon in California and 419 per gallon in Georgia. Now, yeah, that's accurate at the pump, but every single fleet uses a card that they're going to get a discount on you know uh, where i work for example it says 613 when i was in california recently but our actual pump price was 513 per gallon so you know you're looking at a huge difference in cost there and then same thing with like you know georgia um there's a couple of places recently where i got uh, 297 a gallon so these numbers are off a little bit and you know when you're looking at 613 Versus 513, I mean, that's that's a pretty uh, big difference there. What's up? So, 15% or so. So, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that just to have a comparison here. So, again, we got one to one comparison of class four trucks. These are uh, class C. Average payload is 2,500 pounds. And they're saying it's going to be a 3% total cost increase. 
um, you know, and it goes over the labor, personnel, equipment, things like that. And I'm going to leave the links below so everyone can uh, check it out and tell me what they think. All right, now here's where I was talking about 67 mile, uh, 67 cents per mile fuel cost at 9.1 miles per gallon. So I think this is a little bit of a low estimate for uh, what these trucks or what these vans can get uh, when it comes to fuel economy. So I think that this 67 cents per mile should be more like 50 cents per mile, even in California. And then over in Georgia, we're looking at 5% total increase costs. And, and again, shown here, 44 cents a mile fuel costs at 9.1 miles per gallon. That's a $10,000 difference between California and Georgia fuel costs per year. So if we accounted for that, um, you know, the 3% would be more like 10%, and this 5% would be more like 13% for the cheaper fuel. And again, I don't understand why these trucks are only getting you know, nine miles per gallon, that seems awfully low. Um, so let's, let's get into the next part. So here we're looking at uh, class B vehicles, average payload, 11,000 uh, pounds. You know, again, it goes over labor costs, personnel, fuel. And again, here we're looking at 67 cents per mile fuel costs. Again, I think these trucks should be getting a lot better than that. Um, so that would, instead of being 22%, you know, more like 28%. And the same thing with Georgia, you know, instead of being 28%, we'd be looking at more like 35%. So I think that this study definitely favors EVs a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot more to this and every comparison really needs a ton of context because depending on where you live, electricity might be more expensive, diesel might be cheaper, and that's going to be a lot of variety um, across the country. So here's the big boys, class eight, one-to-one -one comparison. And here's the big cost right here is the labor cost. And that's what I was talking about when it comes to charging and distance and things like that. You're going to need two tractors to do the job of one. And that's where the big cost is coming in here with labor costs of uh, being 164000 instead of 93. And then that all adds up with personnel costs, equipment, maintenance, fuel, and you know, it adds up to a lot over time. But again, Here's where I keep talking about the um, the fuel cost, where it's seven miles per gallon, 89 cents a mile fuel cost. Now I drive a, um, a Cascadia DD15 with 293 gears, and I haul F550, F750, stuff like that. Very often I'm close to 80,000 pounds, and this is like, you know, I I typically get you know seven and a half miles per gallon for the most part. You know, sometimes I dip a little lower, sometimes I dip a little higher, but the truck has averaged eight miles per gallon since I've been in it. So I think that again, with the lower cost of fuel that you actually pay and a little bit better MPG, this 89 cents a mile should be much lower. My actual cost per mile is typically around 36 cents. So I think this is a little bit ridiculous. Now Georgia is a little more accurate, but again, you know, you're paying a lot less for fuel. I think that 58 cents a mile fuel cost should be, you know, more like 35 cents. So if you were to account for that, this 114% in Georgia would be more like 130%. And you know, the same thing for California, instead of being 94%, you know, we'd be looking at, you know, a lot more like that 120%. Um, you know, so they got a mixed fleet here. Like, you know, what if you replaced, you know, just some ICE vehicles with EVs and didn't do the whole thing? You know, you're looking at 56% for California or 67% for uh, Georgia. You know, and then it just talks about the impact. Um, you know, 72% of goods are transported by trucks. Um, you know, riders analysis estimates cost increase of 94 to 114% to convert heavy duty trucks to EVs and 56 to 67% to convert mixed fleets of 25 vehicles depending on the geographic region. And that's what this conversation really needs to be about is context. Um, you know, again, because if you're fueling up in California, diesel is way more expensive. If you're fueling up in, you know, Kansas City, Missouri, fuel is going to be a lot cheaper. And there's a lot that has to do with this, uh, along with the government, which is forcing emissions uh, rules to be changed. So, uh, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that we're going to be seeing all of these trucks convert to EV overnight one day? Do you think this is even going to happen? I mean, if the manufacturers can't make it happen with Tesla or, you know, Freightliner, I think we're gonna have a hard time uh, doing this. And, you know, I think that one of the big things we're gonna overlook is inflation. You know, if we're looking at 114% increase for, you know, class eight trucks, uh, rates are gonna have to double overnight to account for this. I mean, that's the only way it's gonna happen. So I don't think rates are gonna go up very fast to, 
let this happen and I don't think that uh, the manufacturers are really gonna be able to pump these trucks out at the price that they're saying um, so comment like subscribe and uh, let me know down below in the comments what you think uh, keep the shiny side up